Hi there, how's it going? My name is Sergio and welcome back to the third episode of Anima 2D Basics. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at how we can create the bones for our character so that it actually moves, as well as setting up the IKs so that we can later on animate it really easily. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to need to do is to create a new game object under the Steve game object. So with Steve game ob object selected, go ahead and create an empty game object. Let's call that bones. To create new bones with the bones game object selected, go ahead and right click to the object and let's click on bone. Now this is our bone by clicking inside the square, we can move the bone around and by clicking on the rest of the bone, we can rotate it. Perfect. So let's go ahead and position it in the right place. Let's put it down here, right about where the hips would be as well as set up the rotation on the z-axis to 90 that way is pointing upwards now let's take a look at the bone 2d script for a second we have a few properties here the first one is the color which is only uh, is only gonna affect the color of the bone in case you have a whole bunch of bones and you wanna differentiate differentiate them by category and set a different color you can do that here as well as you can change the alpha of the bone here under the child uh, property we will see the child's of this bone right here as well as we have a length property now with the length property we can change how long the bone is pretty self-explanatory right so let's go ahead and place the bone a little bit lower let's make the bone right about that long that seems to be right uh, there it goes that's good now let's rename this to hip and with hip selected let's create a new bone same method to the object bone this will create a child of the hip bone which means that if i rotate the hip bone the other bone is gonna rotate as well and and yeah you pretty much get the idea they're linked together now let's go ahead and undo that and let me reduce the length of this until it goes right about where the neck would be then let's call this torso with the torso bone selected let's go ahead and create the bone for the head so right click on it to the object another bone let's change the length to the top of the head and name this head now we're gonna go ahead and create the bones for the legs to do that let's select the hip bone and again right click to the object and bone this will create a child of the hip uh, bone but this one is a little bit different because this one is uh, has this transparent line on it which basically means that it's gonna follow the hip bone as well but it's not linked to the other bone chain so let's go ahead or, or chain of bones uh, so let's go ahead and position this onto the left leg and set the rotation to match the sprite let's change the length so that it gets uh, so that is as long as uh, where the knee would be and let's rename that left leg now with the left leg bone selected let's go ahead and create another one let's rotate it until we get it into position and change the length right where the foot starts or yeah and let's go ahead and rename that left leg 2 or left leg lower personal preference there um, let's create another bone for the foot make it match the rotation and set the length and let's call that left foot now let's go ahead and do the same thing for the right leg is the same method Awesome, so with that done, we're ready to go ahead and create the bones for the arms. Now, these bones are going to be linked or are going to be childs of the torso bone. The reason for that is because if we move the torso um, towards the back, the body is going to move this way, right? The problem is if the bones of the arms are linked or are child 
children of the hip bone, uh, the arms won't follow. So the arms are gonna stay here or the, and the body is gonna go that way. So that wouldn't look natural, wouldn't it? So let's go ahead and with torso selected, create a new bone and it's the same process as with the arms only this time we're only gonna be creating two bones in my case I'm not gonna make the hands of the character move of course if you wanna if you want to do that on yours feel free to do it great so with that done we're ready to go ahead and bind the bones to the mesh so to do so the only thing we need is to select let's start with the body uh, sprite mesh and let's open that up and over here we just need to drag the hip bone group onto the set bones property now with that this has filled up the list with all the bones the however we need to remove some of those because not all the bones are going to be in the body so to do so we just select with these two little bars on the left we select the last one and keep hitting the minus button you're gonna have to do it do it twice for each element so let's do that until we're left only with the hip and torso bones awesome once we've done that we can go ahead and reopen the sprite mesh editor to do so let's hit on window anima 2d sprite mesh editor and I'm gonna dock it down here again and now since we've set those bones over here you can see that they now appear in the sprite mesh editor now the however they still don't affect the mesh so if you rotate it nothing's gonna happen so to bind them to the mesh the only thing we need to do is hit on bind now they've changed color and if down here you click on overlay you're gonna see an overlay of the influence of each one's each one of the bones onto this mesh you can adjust uh, the weights that's what they're called of the of each bone which will affect the influence in the surrounding vertices I'm gonna hit auto because that has done a really good job so you could also another quick note is that you could also activate pies to see uh, the influence of each one of the bones in the different vertices of the sprite mesh I'm gonna deactivate that overlay for me it seems to be the best way to work this so let's hit apply and now you can already start to see that there it goes the bones are affecting the body mesh so uh, let's do the same thing with the rest let's select the head grab the head bone and drag it onto the set bones property same thing bind and this is just one bone so it's gonna affect the whole mesh so let's keep doing the same thing just dragging the bones hit and bind auto and apply for the rest of them amazing now that we've done that we're almost done we're with our character uh, you can already start to see that the bones work perfectly you can move all the body parts around the head and everything just like in the character I showed you in the first episode so let's save the scene and let's go ahead and create the eye case let's close the sprite mesh editor window we're not gonna be needing that anymore so with Steve selected you could either do it under Steve or the bones game object I'm gonna do it under bones actually to create the eye case we need to right click select 2d object and IK limb and actually let's keep that organized let's create a new game object an empty game object make sure the transform is reset to 0 0 0 and let's call that IK now drag the new IK limb onto the IK game object and let's rename this to left arm IK perfect let's take a look at the IK script here you can see a few properties there's the record property this will allow you when animating uh, to save the positions of the bones directly not the ones of the IKs because when you're animating with the IKs you're gonna be setting the keyframes for the IKs not for the bones um, this is uh, there's another way 
to go about this I prefer baking the whole animation so basically I create the animation and then uh, copy that clip and then uh, save that in case I need to modify it and then bake that which will create a with which will actually override all of your keyframes uh, so that it bakes the position and rotation of all the bones in your character but that's for a later episode let's go ahead and talk about the target target will determine the last bone of the chain that will follow this ik so keep in mind that the ik limb has a maximum of two bones uh, a maximum of a of a bone chain of two bones so for example for the legs we're not going to be adding the foot bone onto the ik you also have the weight which determines how much the ik game object will affect the movement of the of the limb we have restore default po pose orient child and flip i uh, we're not going to use these two for now and flip uh, basically actually let me just show you because it's going to be faster and easier so let's go ahead and cre and select the left arm two and drag that onto the target now you can see that the ik has turned green that means that the two bones are connected you can also see that the bones have this little dot that has turned green too to um, show you which bones are affected by the ik so basically you can see that the the arm follows the natural position uh, like has the natural movement that an arm would have uh, if we if you checkbox here the flip property that will actually change it around now for this arm this doesn't make sense because i don't think anyone does this so let's go ahead and leave that unchecked and this one has been set up we can now go ahead and duplicate this game object call it right arm ik and change the target to right arm 2 and let's move that over here and you can see that we have the right, right, right arm uh, set up as well now let's go ahead and make the ones for the legs and before we set those up I'm actually going to show you because you may have noticed that there's another IK uh, object in here so let's go ahead and create that first uh, you don't need to do this but just to show you the difference in between those uh, I'll do it so uh, basically this IKCCD will allow you to uh, use these I IKs for a chain of bones that is longer than two bones so let's le let's play around with it a little bit let's drag the left foot onto the target and let's set the number of bones to three because we have three bones if we were to set it to we actually cannot set it to more because the chain finishes here but if you had more you could keep going uh, with that you can see that the whole leg follows the IK however this is not the way a leg usually moves uh, the, it, this is awesome for the foot movement that's amazing however the knee doesn't bend and that that that, that is not gonna work for us so you could play around with the damping and, and try to make it work a little better but this is just not going to do the job for us today so let's go ahead and delete that and let's keep on going with the ik limb let's create a, this one and call it left leg ik and for the target we're actually gonna set it let me set it down here we're actually gonna set it to the left leg too because we don't want the foot to be inside the IK and as you can see here the knee is bending the wrong way and that's why the flip property is really useful so as you can see now it moves perfectly now the the foot doesn't rotate and actually if you try to rotate it it's not gonna let you do it because of the IKs however I will we will take a look at this issue later on when I make the tutorials about actually animating the character so you don't need to worry about that right now so let's go ahead and duplicate this uh, left leg IK call that right leg IK and set that to the right leg too awesome so with that you can see that we have our character all set up and ready to go for animation you could see that uh, as you could see this was really really easy now a quick note is that in case you wanted to make him like go backwards 
like that and as you can see the arms are still trying to follow the IKs. One way to go about this when animating is simply disable the, disabling the game objects which will allow you to move them independently with no problems. So as you can see it's it was pretty straightforward and easy to do. So that was everything for this tutorial series. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or suggestions for later tutorials, let me know in the comments down below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this. And I'll see you in the next one.